Hi, I'm Will Kent. Uh, I'm going to be engineering the session here today. Um, I work at Focus Fry. I also do live sound production myself. Uh, in my spare time, I record bands. So we're here at Bounce Studios today uh, to record Venice. Um, we're going to also show you how to use Sapphire Mix Control to its fullest potential. It's the summer and we've got it made From the parties to the games We'll be drinking and try to behave And I know this love can make it through I can feel it in my heart When I think about my So we're using the Liquid Sapphire 56 as the interface here. So the first thing that we need to do is to hook up the firewire cable to that to connect it to the computer. So when hooking up firewire cables, it's important to have the interface and the computer off so as to prevent any damage to either the interface or to the computer. We're using the Octopre Mark II Dynamic to expand the I.O. count of the Liquid Sapphire 56. We're also using it so that we can add compression to the kick and snare on the way in. So the first thing we need to do is hook up the ADAC cable to the optical out of the Octopre Mark II Dynamic and then add that to the optical in of the Liquid Sapphire 56. We're only using one ADAC cable uh, because we're only running at 48k. If you need to run at 96k then you need to use two ADAC cables to be able to get the full channel count. So now we're going to hook up the ISA 828. We're going to do that over optical as well. So here we'll just connect another optical cable to the ADAC output of the 828 to the second optical in of the Liquid Sapphire 56. So we've now got all our digital inputs made to the Liquid Sapphire 56. At the moment it won't all be in sync so we need to set something as the sync master. In this circumstance we're going to use the Octopri as the sync master. Uh, so that will be set to internal. Uh, we're then going to set the Liquid Sapphire 56 to sync to ADAP1, which is the ADAP port that the Octopri is connected to. We're then going to use a word clock cable to go from the Octopri to the ISA 828, so the ISA will also be in sync as well. Okay, so we're now going to hook up the word clock cable from the Octopri to the ISA 828. So you go from the word clock output of the Octopri to the word clock input of the ISA. So obviously here we're using a Liquid Sapphire 56 and expanding the I.O. via ADAT, but you can also use a Sapphire Pro 24 DSP or Pro 24 or a Scala 18 I6 to be able to get extra eight channels in via ADAT. So now we're going to hook up uh, an outboard effects processor. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using an ISO 430 Mark II so that we can add compression and EQ onto our track during the session. Okay, so to do this, we're going to use a dedicated pair of inputs and outputs on the Liquid Sapphire 56 so that the ISO is always available to us as an insert in our door. So in this instance, we're going to be using line output 6 on the LS56, so using a jack to XLR, that's the line output there, to the line input of the ISA430. Then again, using another jack to XLR, go from the main output of the ISA430 back to line input 6 on the Liquid Sapphire. So now always on input 6 and output 6, we've got the ISA's compression and EQ available to us. Okay, so once we've got everything connected, we open up our door and Sapphire Mix Control. Sapphire Mix Control is a comprehensive piece of software that allows you to effectively route uh, inputs to your outputs, uh, set up the sync on your outboard pieces of gear, and also to set up headphone mixes. It's worth noting that if you've got a Scala 8i6 or 18i6 interface, that comes with Mix Control software as well, which allows you to do exactly the same things as Sapphire Mix Control does. So in this top section, we've got the mixer, 
A mixer allows you to sign any input to the interface or any output from your door software to a mix. You can then send that mix to any of the outputs on the interface. You've got various different mixes across the top, so you can send a different level to one output, say for a drummer, than you would do for another output for the bassist. So the next section we're going to look at is the routing section. Uh, this allows you to assign any mix that we may have created at the top, any output from the door or from your computer, or any input directly to one of the outputs on the interface. So at the top you've got monitor outputs one and two, it's because it's traditionally outputs one and two that your monitor mix goes to. So as I said, you can either assign the main mix or you can just assign the outputs from your door straight to it if you like. And so this section down here in Sapphire Mix Control, um, we've got the sync section here where you can choose the sample rate that your interface is running at. You can choose the sync source and then sync status shows you whether it's locked or not and then obviously Firewire driver showing that the Firewire is connected to the interface as well. You've then got the monitor preset section over here. This is where you can control whether your outputs are switched on or off. So when it's blue, the output is switched on. When it's red, the outputs are switched off. And so if you shift and click on one of the outputs, it changes it to grey and that sets the output to output at 0 dB. So you would set it like that if you were outputting to a piece of outboard gear. So in this case, in our setup at the moment, we need to shift and click on output 6 so that it's outputting at 0 dB to the ISA 430. So now we need to set our sync sources up. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that everything's running at the same sample rate. So in this case, we're going to be running at 48k. We then need to set the Octopre to internal as it's our clock master. And we then need to set the ISA 828 to sync to word clock. And then in mix control, we need to set the Liquid Sapphire 56 also to 48k and to sync to ADAT1. Okay, so now we've got all our sync sources set correctly in Sapphire Mix Control. I'm just going to go up and set logic up. So the first thing we need to do is to set the audio preferences. So we just need to change that to the Sapphire. You need to set the audio preferences up regardless of the door that you're using as well. And now we need to add all the tracks in for the band. So we're going to add tracks, audio tracks. First of all, we're going to add 10 mono tracks. I'm going to make them ascending. At the moment, we're going to set them all to output to one and two, but we can change that afterwards if we need to. So I'll just go through and label these up. Okay, so our drum kit's coming in to the Octopri. So the snare's on channel one of the Octopri, which is channel 11 on the interface, so we need to change that to input 11. Snares on channel 2 on the Octopri, so we need to change that to input 12. And we just go through and change that for the rest of the drum kit. Okay, and what we need to do now is add a click track for the band, so I'm going to add a new track which is a software instrument. Uh, it varies in different doors, but in Logic it's, it's on a software instrument track. Just drag that down to the bottom. And then we're going to add in the click. Now we're going to route the click out to its own individual output so it doesn't come out of the main monitors. So we're going to route it to mono output 5. And then whatever, whichever mix we add output 5 into, door output 5 into, will be the click track.
Okay, now, so we've got um, all of the inputs now assigned into Sapphire Mix Control. So what we're going to do is set up each of the artist's individual headphone mixes. So we'll start with Jack here. Um, you can see if you want to label a mix, you just double click on the name down here and then you can change it in there and it will change it at the tab at the top for you. So Jack's headphones are connected to line output three. So we're going to assign Jack's mix to line output three. George's headphones are on four, so we're going to assign those. And we've got Owl's on five. Line output at six remembers our 430, so we can't use that one. Then line output at seven is Max's. And line output at eight is James's. And there all of our mixes are signed up then. We've also got up here our control room mix, which is the mix that we're going to hear here in the control room. So we're going to assign that to the monitor outputs on the interface. So we can then hear that back in here. So now when artists ask us for different levels, we can then change it in their individual mixes in Sapphire Mix Control. Well, yeah, can I just get uh, a little less guitar, please? Yeah, no worries, mate. So Alex just asked for less guitar in his headphones, so I'm just going to go to Alex's headphone mix here and just pull down the guitar slightly there. Will, can I get some more kick, some more snare and some more click in my headphones, please? So Jack's asked me for some more snare, so he's going to add some more snare into his headphone mix here. He's asked me for a bit more kick, so I'm going to add some of that in. He also wants some more click as well, so just turn that up. Okay, so now everyone's happy with their headphone mixes, so we're going to go ahead and record the backing track. And then once we've done that, we're going to go back and overdub the vocals. Check, check, uh, one, two. I think I can hear myself double. Uh, I think I've got a bit of latency. All right, mate, I'll sort it, no worries. Okay, so Max has just said to me that he's getting uh, latency in his headphones. Uh, so at the moment, we've got his vocal coming through from the door on this channel, so it's being processed by Logic. So because of the buffers in the, in the processing, uh, he will be getting a latency. So what we're going to do is change, his, change it so that he's got a direct input going straight to his headphones. So now his vocal's going straight into the Sapphire and straight back out with zero latency. So we've had a really good day down here at Bounce. Uh, Sapphire Mix Controls really helped us out. Uh, band are happy, session went well, and we've got a good track out of it. <laughs>